Hello everybody, welcome to this new video of digital painting with Krita. Today I bring you exciting material because I have spent a lot of time creating these libraries I'm going to talk about. Vector libraries are very useful when you want to speed up your painting process because you can achieve a really good amount of detail in no time. This is a very known technique for concept artists. Um, it simplifies the composition or maybe create more compositions to understand better your, your scene and create the better shot for, for the plane in the, in the film or the video game. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load new vector libraries in Krita and how to use the symbols. Also, we are covering tonal value control, perspective, and depth of field. And I will also teach you how to create your own first library. Okay, now it's time to load the vector libraries. If we go to the settings, manage resources, we go to the import resources, and now we select the nature and sci-fi, click OK, and we load this as the third option, the symbol libraries. Click OK and wait a couple of seconds and when you can move this is okay and nothing happens separately but if we go to the settings docker we can see the vector libraries docker so we go to the natural shape we can see that everything is loaded correctly and now we're going to explore this a bit deeper okay now we have the vector libraries loaded but how can i use them just drag the symbol the desired symbol you want to your canvas okay automatically krita creates a vector layer you can see by the icon that it is not a paint layer is a vector layer you can see the nodes here okay and you can see that you can resize the symbol using the handles and also you can use the right click to see more options for the symbol you can go to the transform and you can rotate or you can go here you can also mirror the symbol mirror vertically the symbol and rescale and imagine i want to come back to my original starting point well i go to the transform go to the reset transformations and then Imagine I want to duplicate this symbol. How can I do it? I can drag another symbol, but imagine I am around here and I have to look for. I can go here and press Ctrl C and Ctrl B, and then I copy and paste. Okay, copy and paste. And I am creating copies because maybe I have a symbol that is in a size like this. And I want the right size modification. And now I have three trees. And imagine they are located in distance. So this is nearest from us. And this is the distant tree. Right now, everything is black. But we can ungroup all the elements. Just selecting and ungroup. You have seen that this has changed to black color and that means we can control the color right here and also we can control the color if i select the symbols right here with the color wheel isn't it cool <laughs> let's go deeper imagine this is the foreground uh, something like this and this is the middle ground and this is the background and you can see how using three different tonal values we can play with depth and this is very interesting because we can play with composition remember these symbols are composed or are created with a lot of different shapes so if i drag for example this i can see that it has a lot of different shapes that create the main symbol if i make right click i can go to the ungroup and then if i make right click again I can go to the logical operations i can split the symbol and you can see how now i can drag parts of the symbol and this is really useful believe me because i can create shapes uh, from the shapes and i can repeat the operation distort elements 
and start. And if you have played uh, with this kind of uh, creation, it's a random creation, you can see clearly that it has a lot of potential because painting all these shapes separately or creating selections is more complex than just drag some symbols and play a bit with them. And remember that this is a group so I can colorize this really easy in this way. So maybe I want to have this with a big size to create a background. Maybe I can just Ctrl C, Ctrl B and then transform a mirror and I get a more complex uh, structural element for the background that I can combine with my other symbols and this way I can create my own just a techno landscape okay you get the idea of what can we do with this now I'm going to show you how to use the clipping group with these uh, vector libraries okay so I have my vector layer here and if I right click and go to group and quick clipping group nothing happens apparently but I can use uh, for example a photograph as a new layer above this mask layer and you can see the photograph so I'm going to reduce the opacity to uh, control T and rotate symbol and I have my yeah more more or less my my content just like this and click enter and I use this and increase the opacity now you can see how I am using this photo to create a lot of detail inside this shape okay but uh, what happens if I create a new layer and using also this vector layer and I create an airbrush pass uh, with the right tool maybe just around black and you can see that I have a lot of volume and detail and with barely no effort and the good thing is that I can change my shape accordingly to my needs and then it will respect that we have above and I can also uh, maybe another shape not this one uh, maybe something like this in rotate the shape and compress to create this uh, detail inside the main shape okay right here maybe you like it maybe you find it useful just let me know in the comments and remember this is all at the beginning you can use your brushes to complement the work that you have uh, created with photographs just smudging creating volumes and breaking the texture uh, to see not so photographic at more artistic level and if you want this as a pure pixel shape uh, you can just flatten the layer and now you can see how the icon has changed and now you can paint also in the shape to break to break a bit more the, the shape inside I hope you find this useful now let's go with the really really fun part because we are going to apply filters on the vector layers so we select vector layer 2 and go to filter mask and select the adjust levels and go to the output levels and you are going to see how this goes to distance and let's go to the vector layer 1 and filter mask and do the same but in the mid-ground so we have the foreground, mid-ground, background and now let's go to vector layer 4 and then apply another filter mask with lens blur in 45 around 45 to create this kind of depth of field 
now we are not interested in this part we are interested in this section of the image now let's go with a super trick because you can use perspective and mesh deform in the vector layers too so if i select the vector layer one and go to the add transform mask then you can use the transform operation and select with right click the perspective and you can distort this in distance and you can see how a vanishing point is going to appear right here the vanishing point of that plane and then we can go to the vector layer and then select the symbol if you can select the symbol easily then disable the transform mask select the symbol active the transform mask ctrl c and v and then you can move your duplicate in distance project it it's not cool it is only affecting the plane that you have in perspective i don't know if this could be improved with time so maybe but in this way we can resize the symbol and you get the proper scale or you can paint in another layer amazing and remember everything is non-destructive so i can just turn off everything and then i realize i get the same starting point as we had before so it's a super cool feature and you can use it just right now so i would like to see your results really okay so here we go step by step just to create a couple of vector shapes that we are going to use later for simple library okay so first thing first we need to go to the object and go to the object properties and this dialog appears easy nothing appears right now because we don't have any object in the screen so the next step is to create for example with this polygon or a star and we are going to create a triangle i press the control to control the position to vertical and it's a perfect uh, triangle to play with later i will show you the trick okay i duplicate this I make double click and then go to the corners and create hexagon then I create a new one uh, what do you want for this maybe a pentagon which is really useful for tires and then I go to create a star which is a beautiful shape that we can create in a moment just changing this icon to this icon okay five star four star in this example, I'm going to use this, the five star. These are going to be my objects for my library. Really easy, really fast. I color this, maybe black. I give them black color and then I'm going to rename the objects properly. So this is going to be a triangle, triangle, and this will be zero one triangle and then click on the set button then hexagon i will speed up this part now i'm verifying that the id is stored inside the object okay so i have the title the id and the label and i verify if, and everything is correct so i'm going to shade this and done i have my file so now i need to convert this to symbols and to do that i go to object and look for the symbols and this dialog appear here and you just only have to select this one make sure that we have the current document active and press the plus button okay so i press the plus plus you save your library you can save with this name or save with another name and then we're going to use the basic leaf and as you can see the four objects 
are right here in order because we are using this 0, 1, 0, 2, through 3, through 4. And we can just play with the saves. Okay. We can uh, rotate, scale, do whatever you want. And remember that if you want to see the content of the SVG file, you can do it because you can open the file just with a simple text editor and you will see not cryptic but just simple code that you can uh, review to see if everything is correct because how cool is that as you have seen playing with vector libraries is really easy and really powerful and now you can create your own vector libraries with Inkscape too Maybe in the future will be possible inside Krita. Who knows? Developers are listening to me. <laughs> anyway, we have the power in our hands. If you find this video helpful, just let me know in the comments because I read all the comments to know how the community evolves around Krita. And that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.